Okay guys, so in this video I'm going to talk to you a little bit about a basically a programming or a design pattern for programming called a factory. And we're doing this in JavaScript because hey, JavaScript is amazing, right? And so the idea behind a factory is that you have a function of some sort that takes a given input and based on the input itself it will produce different results. Now in type languages usually what happens is that you will have some type of high level abstraction say a user and the factory can produce multiple versions of a user so maybe an extension of a user would be something like an admin or a customer or you know somebody something like that and that that's great in a typed system but i wanted to show you a few examples of how you can use the factory pattern system if you will in javascript so let's get into it the first thing that i like to think about when i think about a factory is that I, I kind of categorize them into two different types of factories. You have a data-driven factory. Basically, the, it's a factory that will return an instance of some type of data or like an object or something like that. And it's going to be different depending on the input data. So let's walk through this code here. <clears throat> so we have an element up here. We can actually go and check the web page we're going to look at. So Basically, these are the elements that we're working with right now. This is what we're interested in. This is just a table that I did a bit of styling on, and I'll show you exactly how this works. So, first and foremost, we create a just a we grab the root element where we're going to append our like the component that we're going to create because the goal of this exercise is to show you how you can use a factory in order to in this case it's going to be to create a table because a table is a if you think about it a very nice use case for for this because a table's structure like how many columns and how many rows a table is going to have is very it's a flexible thing if you wanted to create a table component you would have to have some way of of basically dynamically creating different amount of rows and different amount of columns based on the input and that's exactly what a data a data-based factory is like the semantics about this factory that we're looking at now that that's that's a perfect use case for this so let's just walk through it so we have a higher order function here that takes in a document and you might may ask why do you take in a document well I take in a document because I don't like to have global references in my code because if I have global references then I am assuming that document is going to be in the global context here I have to do it in order to just bootstrap to the root component you could try to did this up a little bit but at least my functions sh should assume that the document object is in the context of my code and the power about with this is that this is now an isomorphic application uh, function where you basically can you can run this in Node and you can run it in the browser with a, as long as you provide the document and the interface to create uh, that is like the contract if you will you can run this anywhere which I can think is pretty nice so what it's going to do is it is going to return a rows function basically so we start by creating a table with the create element function and then we have a function called append rows and then we simply return the table easy PC and as you can see this is where it's happening like this is where we are creating the table function and if you're paying attention this is actually a factory it's a function that returns another function this is a higher order function uh, function but it's basically just producing a, another instance of another function that but let's not get into too many semantics about this because that just gets really confusing but just wanted to illustrate you know the mindset here so let's look at the append rows function so the append rows function takes in a table this is what's happening up here so it takes a table and some rows we loop over all the rows we grab the row data and the index and the reason we want the index is because the interface on the table node is to use insert row the insert row function and virtually what that hap it was what that is is that it's a function that will s that where we basically give it a number and say hey can you create a row in your structure at this index so we're just looping over each row and it's going to return a node a row node and that's what we're going to use next so we have a function called append cells we give it the row and the data that is in that row 
and then finally we have a pen cells which takes in the row under the row data we loop over all of the row data and then we grab the text that is supposed to be in each cell in a row and the index and row has a similar interface called insert cell same thing there you just insert it at a given point point in the row structure and it returns the cell and then finally we just set the inner html so that's that's the function structure to create this table and this is all happening in javascript right so here we have the data it's a two-dimensional array where i think that this kind of illustrates the table very in a very nice manner if we go back you can see that this is exactly the same structure like so full bar bass full bar bass and it's i think this is kind of elegant like i can add another row or a few rows go back refresh it and as you can see this at least to me reads very naturally like a table structure so I can now of course make this more fancy right now we're just using strings but as you can see now I can actually add columns I can add rows and I can basically based on the data shape that I'm putting into my table function here whatever I'm as long as I like have this two-dimensional array structure and right now it's just text but you could make this even fancier the table factory is just going to produce different types of tables and that to me is a pretty nice use case for a factory pattern if you will now let's talk about the next one the next factory pattern that is fairly common is the label factory where you don't actually provide much in terms of data all you really do is that you provide a just a text or like some type of indicator saying that hey I want you to make this thing for me. So in JavaScript, the most common factory, you know, if you if we just think about it, it's create element. Like that's a factory because you, all create element does is that it takes a string that represents the element that you want the basically to be created for you, and it's going to instantiate and create that element for you, and that's pretty powerful. So let's walk through this code. Just there's a bit of stuff going on here. So what we first do is that I, I have a few validation checks that needs to happen so what I like to do is to create a higher order function which takes in the label and returns a function that takes in something and all it does is that it's going to look at the type of and make sure that the type of the, th the, the type of the thing is equal to the label so now I can actually generate these three functions here so I now have a function that checks if something is a node, if it's an object, or if it's an is, is a string. And then we have this function called maybe child, and it just takes something and it returns if it is a node or if it's a, is an object and it's not an array. And the reason why we do this is because JavaScript is a little bit weird, so sometimes you like when you're rendering things to the DOM, it's going to be in the shape of a node and it may also be in the shape of an object but the problem is that it should never be in like if you do type off on an object and on a array they're both going to say object that's why they added this is array function so that you can actually specifically check that an object is not an array that's a little bit of JavaScript weirdness for you, but that's the way it works. So let's look at this function called apply attributes. So apply attributes takes in a node and some uh, is like attributes in this case we're checking that attributes is if it's not an object we simply return because we're assuming that we want an object of attributes then we grab the keys of that object we loop through all the attribute keys and then on the node we call set attributes so that we can add attributes to our elements and as you can see we're just setting key to whatever value the key is and that that's basically it and then we have our make elements function which is a factory in of itself so it takes in like it, it's a higher order function takes in a document and an element name returns a function that expects a children whatever that is and the attributes and then it, it's it basically does document.create element with whatever we passed in as the element name and it creates that element then as we saw we see here that earlier we were talking about apply attributes so what it basically does is that it takes the element the attributes that we're providing it and if we because sometimes we may have attributes sometimes we may not so if there are no attributes this is not going to do anything but if we give it attributes it's going to just occupy this element with or populate this element with all of the attributes we want which is awesome 
and then we go down to the next step which is that we check if uh, the children's property here if it's a sh maybe it, it's a child and basically what we saw earlier is that this is going to check if children is a node or an object and that it's not an array and if all of that is like true then we're going to simply append this sh these children or this child to to the element so that you can actually create an, ele uh, an element and then add things into that element you go and we will see very quickly or very soon I'll show you exactly why why we want to do this then we check if it's an array if children is an array then we simply loop over all the children <coughs> and we add each child to the element this is perfect for lists and stuff of that nature and then finally if we see that it's not a node it's not an object it's not an array maybe it's just a string and if it's just a string we simply set the elements inner HTML to whatever children is and then finally re we return the element now this allows us this is a factory function because what we can do now is that we can generate other functions <coughs> from this function by just basically giving it a label or like some indicator of what type of function that we wanted to create so we want to create an h1 and an h2, an h3, a unordered list, a list item, and a div. And now we have all these functions that will, if we provide them, as we can see down here, we can actually create an h1 with the label, like just given, give it the text foo and some styling, and h2, and you know, without any type of styling, like there are no attributes. So, so the, you know, as we saw earlier, this attributes at property up here, it's completely optional. Like if we don't want any styles or we don't want any anything like that to be added to it, then we just uh, we just ignore it, right? And we can also give like other elements. So we can actually put a <laughs> well, this is a bit of a contrived example, I will admit. But I put an H2. In, I hear I heard your like uh, headers, so I put an H2 in your H3. Yeah, that that's basically what's happening here. So if we look at at this, this is the first element, the H1, which we saw here. The styling is just hot pink, and we set the f the text color to white. Then we have the bar, which is completely unstyled. It's just a simple element. There are no attributes. And then finally, we have this nested thing here. As you can see, the size is a little bit different, and that's because we have two nested headers inside of each. Uh, we have one H2 inside of another H3. And then finally, we could give it an array as well. So we take all of our list item functions, create a different uh, some list items, and we just pass that to our ul function which will which now will generate this list down here and these are the basics of like the mindset of a factory a factory is <coughs> just a a function or an object or something like that that is which has the job of creating something else that you can then use like an, another object or another function or something like that that's the pattern and to show you like a kind of nice example of how powerful this can be is to just show you this I wanted to just show you that what we can actually do now is that we can actually create our own components with these factories we can just generate almost any DOM structure we would like so here I have my vanilla component and all it does is that it inst instantiates a bunch of list items creates a li UL or a list and it also has a header where it's some text here completely arbitrary to ignore all of this and it gives it some styling and then it basically puts the header above the list and then finally it returns a div with these children inside of it and if we now go to the page here as we can see we just created our first component and we did it all in JavaScript there are there's no react there's no angular anything like that now I'm not saying that you shouldn't use react or angular or angular or anything like that but me personally I have used this strategy of generating my own factory functions when I have a small project or something that needs to be very lightweight then I don't want to add a framework into my code base because let's remember frameworks are pretty heavy so it's pretty cool if you can work without them and this is basically how factories work I hope this was enjoyable to you